today i shall discuss class 11 chemistry course first chapter that is some basic concepts of chemistry now what is chemistry now what is chemistry chemistry is defined as the branch of science that deals with the atoms molecules and the chemical transformation of matter that takes place under the different sets of conditions which are governed by specific laws now what is as i have said the chemistry is about atoms molecules atoms molecules we can say ions mixtures and the different sets of the transformation i have said the what is the transformation the change from one state to another state is regarded as a transformation and these transformations uh, from atoms to molecules and molecules to ions and the different compounds and mixtures are uh, that uh, undergoes transformation under under the different sets of conditions are governed by specific laws Uh, there are certain laws that are the uh, regarded as the laws of uh, chemical combination that forms the basis of chemistry and these laws are as follows the most important ones i am just stating it and i shall discuss it later and uh, the important laws are number 1 uh, the law of avogadro's law law of uh, constant proportion law of definite pro avogadro's law and these are the most important laws that govern the this chemistry now since chemistry is regarded as a branch of science and we know that science has blessings and curses as well now i shall discuss about the importance or and the scope of chemistry in our everyday life now chemistry now chemistry is important because chemistry forms the source of food we can say and its supply number 2 chemistry has immense contribution in maintaining and hygiene number 3 we know that environmental pollution is a uh, big concern of the present century and uh, research is going on in order to minimize the pollution and for the protection of the environment Uh, the chemistry plays a significant role so for the purpose of saving our environment chemistry plays a significant role now apart from this there are some certain important uh, in, uh, there are significant importance and more scope of chemistry lies in the field of we can say research that is undertaken in the field of nano science or nanotechnology besides this it has industrial applications as well 
and the, in the field of transport and in the field of communication also chemistry plays a significant role. So, is a very significant role. Now we know that these are the important aspects which I have just mentioned in which the scope of chemistry is enormous. However, as we know that science has blessing and cards as well. Now we shall discuss the bad effects of chemistry. Now from the environmental detrimental aspects of chemistry are as follows number one in uh, as I have mentioned a short while back that various chemical transformation takes place and these chemical transformations um, do take place in the industries etc for which different consumer products are being made but for making these substances uh, the environmental pollution occurs and which is also considered as the detrimental aspect of chemistry which is polluting the environment because the industrial wastes the gases the exhausts and one of the most important thing uh, which we consider it as a pollutant today is the plastic because Everywhere we go, we see that single-use plastic is prohibited. Why? Because plastic causes pollution. So, the plastic is directly related to chemistry. So, this uh, plastic pollution is considered to be the detrim one of the most important detrimental aspect of chemistry. And chemistry has also given uh, various drugs like cocaine, heroin, etc., which has also been a curse to the human civilization. So, this is in a drugs like cocaine. This constitutes the detrimental aspects of chemistry. Now, yes, it is true that there are some detrimental aspects uh, in chemistry, but the beneficial aspects are much more. If we so, we have to conclude that through chem, though chemistry, that through chemistry, the or studying chemistry will be a blessing for the human civilization rather than a curse. So in this, uh, now I shall discuss the important aspect that is the matter part. I have just told that matter is made up of atoms, molecules and the different constituents that make up the matter. Now I shall discuss about the matter, nature and its classification. Now what is matter? 
anything that has space and occupies mass that anything that occupies space and has mass is termed as matter for example a solid liquid and gas are all regarded as the matter but its states are different a solid has a definite shape and definite volume a liquid has a definite volume but no definite shape and gas does not have any shape or volume so these are the different states of matter now as i have just told that matter is anything that has uh, that occupies space and has mass now matter can be classified on the basis of the physical classification and on the basis of the chemical classification now on the basis of physical classification i am just mentioning this matter on the basis of this forms the physical classification i am writing now on the basis of the physical classification matter can be classified into solids liquids and gases i have just now told that solids are the substances that has definite shape and definite volume liquids are the substances that has definite volume but not definite shape because it takes the shape of the container where it is kept and gases are the substances which have neither definite shape nor definite volume now on the basis of chemical classification this matter is classified as homogeneous and heterogeneous now this is the physical classification i have just now told now matter on the basis of its chemical classification let us discuss this one chemical classification on the basis of chemical classification it is defined as homogeneous heterogeneous this heterogeneous first we have matter now matter we have two things 
we have the classification of matter one is the physical classification and other one is the chemical classification so we shall demarcate this into two terms first here we write physical classification and here we shall write chemical classification the basis of physical classification we have three types that is solids liquids and gas solids liquids and gases on the basis of chemical classification we have homogeneous substance heterogeneous substance pure substance and mixture we have homogeneous and now we have here pure substances here we have mixtures now pure substance can be divided again into two categories one is element and the one is compound now what is homogeneous what is heterogeneous i didn't discuss it now homogeneous is defined to be a material that has uniform composition uniform composition and identical properties that is termed as the homogeneous and heterogeneous substance is defined as the substance in which the components are present in the two phases and its composition is not uniform throughout and these pure substances it can be classified into two parts one is the element another one is the compound now these elements and compounds all are homogeneous why they are homogeneous because they have the uniform composition now this can be considered as homogeneous again we have the mixtures and these mixtures we have two parts again one is the homogeneous and the other one is the heterogeneous homogeneous mixture that means the solution suppose we have taken Uh, we have dissolved uh, one teaspoon full of salt in one glass of water. Now the solvent is solution that is formed, that is the salt solution is clear, crystal clear. So that has the uniform composition, the component, and hence uh, it is termed as the homogeneous. Yes, it is a mixture, but it is homogeneous. Salt water and sugar water. if we take two then it forms a homogeneous solution because the composition uh, is same throughout and on the other hand if we take mixture will be of another category that is the heterogeneous heterogeneous mixture that means if we uh, dissolve sand clay and water if we mix sand clay and water the mixture yes it will form a mixture but that uh, on settling uh, it will settle down and be separated into two phases and so and hence it is that mixture is termed as the 
heterogeneous mixture. Now, uh, the element which we have considered all elements and compounds are homogeneous because they have the same or the uniform composition. Now, amongst the compounds, we have again two more types. One is the organic compound. Another one is the inorganic compound. Clear? Now, what is organic compound? The organic compound is defined as the compound containing carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, we can say. And the inorganic compound is the compound which contains the uh, elements present in the form of the ions that is the cations and anions for example if we consider the sodium chloride uh, the sodium chloride is an inorganic compound why this is an inorganic compound because this comp compound has the two ions and hence these are termed as the ionic compounds one is the positive ion other is a negative ion and in order to maintain the electrical neutrality, this positive and the negative ions are close packed uh, in the lattice and the, their charges balance each other. And hence the compound which is formed, that is the inorganic compounds, that is the salts, generally they are electrically neutral. Yes, I can't